Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar on uh, deep dive into new WS2 streaming integrator release. Uh, so throughout this uh, webinar, we are hoping to cover the most important features and improvements which we released with streaming integrator 110 release. And I am Anusha Jaisundara. I work at as a senior software engineer at uh, integration team in WSO2. And uh, here with me, Lasanta Samrakon is also joining for this webinar. Uh, he is also a senior software engineer at integration team at WSO2. So uh, before we start, uh, if you have any question, please feel free to share those in the question tab. So we will be answering those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, before we uh, move on to the features and improvement, uh, let me give you a, a brief introduction to the streaming integrator. So streaming integrator uh, is a streaming data processing server uh, that integrates streaming data and take action based on those uh, data. So the streaming integration capabilities of enterprise integrator, which is EI, are delivered via this streaming integrator runtime. So as you can see on this uh, diagram, so streaming integrator has the capability of receiving data via uh, streaming sources as always as uh, uh, batch data sources like uh, databases and flat files. So uh, after we receive those data, so streaming integrative integrator will process those uh, data uh, using Siddhi language which is also a complex event processing engine that is also a project under WSO2 umbrella. And those process data will be published uh, to a, uh, we can publish to a uh, event stream or we can save those data in a uh, database or a file uh, manner. So apart from the uh, receiving and processing and the publishing data, streaming integrator supports uh, provide some utilities to monitor the whole process uh, what happens to the uh, how many events have been received how many uh, events have been published so these uh, statistics can be uh, published into a, a, a data a dashboard and you can monitor those uh, data uh, statistic real time using matrix capabilities and uh, we have a capability to monitor all the errors occurring via the uh, while having a uh, while doing the process so that later on you can uh, look into the uh, errors which have been occurred and you can uh, rerun those uh, events so that you can have a zero data loss in your system and we have a query api which you can use to query the data from a streaming uh, process so let me walk you through some use cases of where you can use streaming integrator. So uh, one of the uh, use case is the, as, since we can uh, listen into a streaming data stream and also passive data sources, we can uh, use streaming uh, integrator in uh, event-driven systems and event-centric systems and streaming event uh, integrations. So in uh, that, that cases, so we can receive the events through those uh, 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 media and we can process and on that uh, data, we can publish uh, into a downstream events or we can save into, the into a database. So as I mentioned earlier, so uh, streaming integrator can receive the event and based on this event, we can act. So like we can generate an alert or we can uh, forward those uh, process data into a reporting structure so that you can show those in a GUI or we can uh, make a service call or a API call and uh, get a response. So uh, that is also one use case where we can use streaming integrator. And streaming ETL is one of the main uh, use case where we can use streaming integrator so uh, in the streaming etl uh, we uh, treat all the data sources as streams and act upon those uh, perform uh, etl uh, functionalities on top of 
those streaming uh, data. So in order to facilitate this use case, so we have specially provide the development support so that we can uh, develop and streaming uh, ETL process. So we have a special uh, wizard called ETL task wizard. We have introduced it uh, uh, latest release. And in order to uh, receive the data, publish the data in an ETL use case. So we have uh, developed extensions specifically for that, a CDC extension and a files extension. And also we have a full uh, monitoring capability throughout the process. So we have uh, created a few uh, dashboards using Grafana with a hierarchical uh, manner so that you can monitor all the transaction happen in file or a CDC or in the uh, transaction happen in the database. So, and then again, we have the error handling capabilities so that you can uh, monitor all the process throughout uh, from A to Z. And if some error occurs while you are publishing the events to a certain endpoint, or you are receiving data from a certain endpoint, or when you are mapping data to some uh, data type. So if any error occurs on those uh, areas, we are saving those data into a, a database, a table, so that uh, at the end you can look into those data and uh, uh, retry those data by changing or do a change in the uh, uh, streaming execution or by changing the data uh, uh, input data so that you won't have a, a data lost in your system. So change data capture. So change data capture is also a, a use case where you can uh, use streaming integrator uh, very strongly. So streaming integrator has the capability to uh, monitor a table for a, uh, for a change and act upon that change. So we are supporting CDC for uh, several databases, including MySQL, Oracle, and MSSQL. And so for the, we have two modes that we are supporting, listening mode and the polling mode. For the listening mode, uh, we, can, uh, we can detect the insertions, updates, and the delete, which happens on the table. And in the polling mode, we can uh, monitor the inserts, which happens on the uh, table itself. And, uh, those data will be uh, published into the uh, streaming integrator in a real time manner. So for the streaming, uh, since we have dashboard and the metrics capabilities from the for the CDC and the databases, so we can generate. Uh, we have a, we have created a dashboard, uh, Grafana dashboard, where you can see uh, the whole process, CD process, uh, from A to Z in those dashboard. Uh, processing very large files. So uh, streaming integrator has the uh, specialty of uh, monitor and process files with regardless of its size. So even a file with a 100 GB uh, of uh, size with a 10 millions of lines, we can process that file in, in around in a 20 minutes with a simple setup with two CPUs and two GB of RAM. So uh, at that moment, at this moment, we are supporting several uh, data formats like CSV, XML, and JSON. And in order to capture the uh, real-time uh, file insertion, data insertions, we are supporting the tailing capabilities as well for, a, uh, for, for the file, so that you can uh, uh, get all the latest records. Here's what I found on so the uh, uh, latest uh, changes also can be uh, stream into the streaming integrator and do the process on that, on top of that. So uh, event stream and streaming uh, system integration. So in the streaming, since the streaming integrator can uh, connect into several, uh, air, uh, several uh, consumers, so that uh, streaming integrator has the capability of consuming, consume streaming of events and pass that events into the downstream consumers. So as an example, so streaming integrator can uh, act as a broker when, where, which can uh, receive message from a integrating, uh, sorry, a Kafka broker and do a processing on top of that data and uh, pass it down to the downstream consumers for uh, their use. So 
in the streaming integrator, we have several features. So streaming integrator has a uh, 60 plus connector support so that uh, those uh, with that uh, connectors, you can, uh, uh, with that connectors, uh, you can uh, connect to the outside world uh, without any issue. So we, since we have those connectors, we can connect into the streaming systems like Kafka, NATS, and we have the capability to uh, do a real-time data extraction using CDC file streaming, likewise. And for in order to connect into the transport uh, pro uh, protocols like HTTP, TC TCP, so for that also we have our server connectors. Uh, and then again, we have the uh, uh, numerous uh, connectors to connect into the databases so that uh, we can uh, uh, read the uh, read and write the data into oracle mysql ms sql and also we can connect into the cloud data sources like amazon s3 gcs and azure cosmos db with the latest uh, streaming integrator 110 we have introduced a new connector for azure data lake so now you can use that azure data lake uh, connector to connect into the streaming, uh, sorry, connect streaming integrator into the Azure Data Lake and uh, publish and receive data from the Azure Data Lake itself. Uh, and again, uh, with the latest release, we have done some improvements to the CDC and file extension. So now you can uh, now you can uh, schedule a cron job in the CDC and files. Uh, use cases as well so with the streaming integrator 110 release we have done numerous improvements to the streaming integrator tooling as well so streaming integrator tooling is a, uh, a very uh, uh, completed com a completed tooling uh, a solution which can which has the which is supporting full development life cycle from development to deploy. So in order to support the development, we have the source editor, graphical editor, and the task design, et cetera, for the develop, um, development purpose. And also for the testing of that development uh, use case, we have an event simulator, feed simulator, uh, et cetera, for the testing of that uh, develop uh, use case. And after we tested, the, our, tested our use case, we have to deploy that into the, our production environment. So, for that, we can use our development developing tool, deployment tool, like we have a tool to deploy into uh, VMs and we can uh, export as a Docker artifact or we can export as a, a Kubernetes artifacts at the end of our uh, development of our uh, Siddhya or the uh, ETL uh, process. So with the latest uh, streaming integrator tooling 110 pack, we have introduced this uh, streaming ETL task wizard, which can be used to uh, build an ETL flow in a matter of minutes without no use of calls. So even you have no idea about streaming ETL or streaming data or a uh, streaming lang streaming uh, SQL languages, you can develop an ETL flow uh, in a mi matter of minutes. So it is a step by step self-guided wizard. So in our demonstration, we will uh, walk you through the uh, process how we can develop a uh, ETL task using this wizard. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a fully, a fully uh, completed uh, dashboard uh, capabilities, uh, mo data monitoring capabilities using Grafana and Prometheus. So we are publishing the Prometheus data into a Grafana dashboard which we are uh, packaged by default in our latest streaming integrator. So it has the capability of monitoring the transaction in files, BBs, and CDC use cases. And then again, as I explained earlier, uh, we have the capability of uh, uh, monitoring the errors which occurred while we are processing the data so that we are, and at the end, we are going to uh, store those uh, errors occurred on a table in a database 
so that at the end you can uh, log into that database and using our uh, store explorer you can explore what happens what is the issue that occurred and you can uh, replay that uh, failed event so that you can have a zero data loss and uh, as i uh, explained earlier we have uh, several number of extensions so uh, those extension uh, have uh, has more uh, most of the time those extension has uh, uh, several dependencies to our third party extensions so in a let's say that we have a kafka use case so in that case we have to install some kafka clients into our uh, production server streaming integrator server so at that point earlier we had a we had we had to go and download those extension from several sites and we have to copy those uh, extension into our lib folder but with streaming integrator 110 we have provided this extension install capabilities now you can just click on install button and it will download all the uh, third party extensions which is relevant to that uh, 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 use case or the uh, let's say in the kafka scenario it will down or download all the kafka related extensions and copy automatically into the uh, lib folder so you just have to restart the server so you can uh, have you can get a hands on session idea on this when we are doing the demonstration so i would like to uh, hand, hand over this to lasanta in order to continue with the demonstration so lasanta over to you thank you anush uh, so i'll start uh... So I continue with the uh, demonstration on uh, what are the new features available in the streaming integrator one 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 zero. So uh, as Anusha has mentioned, uh, to demonstrate these uh, features, uh, we have selected a couple of uh, use cases. Uh, so the so this is the first use case that we have selected. So in this case, uh, this is a uh, simple order processing application. Here you can see we have a CG application which actually listens to uh, data inserted into a uh, orders table within, uh, within a SQL Server database. So let's assume there's a store application which actually places orders in this table. And then what the CPA does is it listens to these uh, changes and captures them via change data capturing. And after that, we are publishing those messages to a Kafka topic for dispatching the order. So within that, uh, within this CPA application, we have uh, we are doing some uh, filtering filtering and some projections uh, as well so let's see how this is actually implemented so uh, so this is the first use case uh, so let's uh, jump into the episode of streaming integrator tooling and see how we can implement this so uh, if you are familiar with the w streaming integrator before uh, so uh, this is the uh, ui and here we can create a new uh, cd application in source and also as uh, and also using the design view where you can actually drag and drop the items into the uh, ui and uh, create a new uh, CD, uh, cd application so uh, and uh, within the that is, uh, within the streaming indicator 110 uh, release we have introduced a epl task wizard as uh, anush has mentioned earlier so uh, here you can see there's a new button Called new ETL code. This is where we can trigger the uh, ETL task wizard. So let's uh, uh, click on this. So here you can see a wizard. So this is where we can create the CD application which uh, actually listens, which actually uh, receive events from a source and then do some transformation. And after that, we are publishing those to uh, another scene uh, to be consumed by another application. So uh, so let's create this uh, use case within that within our ETL task wizard. So here you can see we, we have a, a SQL Server database, which actually uh, uh, these data are captured using the C, using CDC. And af after that, we have a, another scene, which is a Kafka topic. So let's configure this one. So first, we have to configure the source. So uh, I'll rename this uh, flow, I give a name for this. Let's say this uh, fetch 
order sir so you can give any name and after that uh, i need to select what is the uh, source so in this case i am using the cdc as my source so here you have to fill some uh, mandatory parameters so for an example what is the dvbc url so i am listening to this uh, this database it is resides on a sql server uh, and it has a table called orders the database is production and the table called uh, called orders so I'm, uh, I have given the JDBC URL here, which is pointed to the database. And uh, let's view the credentials. And now what is the table name? Table name is TV orders. And what is the operation? Operation means uh, what is the uh, card operation that we are going to listen on? So we are going to listen on all the insert, insert events because the orders are getting placed. That means we are inserting records into the table so now we have configured the uh, mandatory parameters but uh, we have to add some additional parameters as well so i am going to select uh, database server name and let's give it a name as local loss default and also what are and also the connector parameters connector properties so this connector properties means uh, this is uh, in here we have to set the uh, snapshot mode uh, initial sp only so this is to capture the uh, database schema from our CDC plan. And then I'm going to uh, click next. So now we have to, uh, we need to create a stream to capture this data from our source, from the source we have defined. So for that, uh, I'll give a name to this, uh, this stream. Let's name it as an order input stream. And here we need to set what are the, para what are the attributes of that stream. So uh, before that, let's see what are the uh, what are the fields we have in our table. We have an ID vacha, which is actually a OPSDS2. Total amount numeric 82 means it is a double. And item count is in payment status and delivery address again strings. So let's put these uh, fields as our stream parameter, stream attribute. So the first one is ID, this and a string. And then uh, the second one is total amount, it is a double. So let's say it is a total amount, double. And then we have the item count, it is an int item count. And then the payment status and the delivery address. Now again, two strings payment status and the delivery address. Delivery address. Okay, now we have created our, we have defined our uh, stream. I'm going to click next. And in here we have to select what is the input mapping available. We have several set of uh, mappings, but for CDC, we have to stick with key value because that is how the uh, CDC events are coming into our stream indicator. So now I'm going to click next. In here you can actually set the filters and uh, windows or some, and also, now other function processors uh, which are going within the streaming uh, within the RCP application. So in here, in this in this scenario, based on this scenario, I'm going to do a filtering. So the filtering is here we have a payment status. So this payment status can be either uh, cash on delivery, uh, paid, or else a pending pending order payment pending order. So uh, if, the, if the payment status is either cash on delivery or pay, then this order will uh, proceed to dispatching. Otherwise, we are, we are cutting off that. We are not uh, allowing this event to be uh, put, that, put into the Kafka topic. So for that, I'm going to create a filter here. So uh, the filter, I'm going to add a bracket first. And then I want to set these are the uh, uh, stream attribute that we have already defined payment status equal either COD that means the cash on delivery or let's open up another bracket and here let's say the payment status equal eight. So you can see now we have created the condition here payment status either COD or, or the payment status equals to paid and then i'm click on the next 
Here we have to uh, configure the sync. So our sync is a Kafka topic. So I'm going to select Kafka here and bootstrap service local 1992 and the topic is dispatch order and it asks whether this is a binary message. No, this is not a binary message. It is a uh, string. Basically, we are expected, expecting to publish a JSON message. So I'm making uh, make this as false and click next. Uh, in here, I am going to add a log sync for this one as well for the testing purposes. And after that, we have to define a, a stream which actually uh, bound to this uh, sync. So whatever the whatever the event that comes to this uh, output stream will transfer to the our destination, which is our Kafka topic. So let's make it as a dispatch stream. And in here, uh, I need to send this ID, this item count, and this delivery address. And also, based on this payment status, I need to introduce a new field called net amount, which means if the payment status is cash on delivery, then the net amount will be the total amount. If the payment status is paid, that means it is not the cash and delivery, then the total amount will be zero. That condition I need to add. So for that, uh, let's add all the all the uh, attributes. ID. Mm, let's get the item count. And I need to have another double which calls the net amount and then a string called uh, delivery address. Let's copy it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, string int double and another string. Next, I need to send this as a JSON. So I'm setting a uh, output web mapping as JSON. Click next. So we don't actually need any grouping, any order by, so any output rate limiting. Uh, so we are ignoring all, the, all these fields. And then click next. Here we, ha we are doing the projection. Say uh, how the input attributes and the output attributes are mapped. So this ID is, is uh, need to be pointed to this ID. So I'm clicking on here and select ID, submit. And the item count is again the item count. And the delivery address, again the delivery address. Here we have the net amount. So here we need to have some function. So let's click here. I need to add a function. So I need the function is if they next. I'm going to add this one. And in here, if the payment status equal cash on delivery then what i'm going to do is this value should be the total amount or else this value should be anything should be zero because it is already paid now i have created the if then else condition it says the payment status is COD, then the total amount or else it is zero and then we submit this yeah, now we have done all the mapping as well. And then what we can do is we can just save and file it. That's it. Now we have created this entire flow using our wizard. So from here, you can either test it using the simulator or as you can export it as a Docker or export to Kubernetes deployment or a, or a deploy to a burger. So uh, first I need to uh, test this out. Uh, but before that, let's see how the source looks like. Uh, so I'm going to close this up. Now you can see in here we have another CPF, which is the new CPF has been created, which order, uh, orders at CD, not CD5. So this is the one. Oh, there's an there's a error here. This error means the dependencies are missing. So in here, uh, in here we are using a SQL server and also a Kafka. So this these SQL Server, CDC, and Kafka both require some additional dependencies, additional JAS. But those are not here. So that is why that error comes in. So we have to install it. So how we can install? The earlier, what we have to do is we have to download these JAS and then convert them into bundles and put them into our uh, SI 
uh, student integrator flip directly and then restart the server. So that is not an easy task because we have to find all the jars and then convert them and then put that there. It will take some time. But now we have uh, we have introduced another feature called extension installer. So this extension installer you can actually use you can install the, install those dependencies. So let's see how we can install. So the one is we uh, in here we have our source which is a SQL Server database with CDC. So change data capture SQL Server. I'm going it is partially installed, so I'm going to install it. So it's installing. It asks to restart the editor, uh, but uh, we need to install dependencies for this Kafka as well. So let's select, search for Kafka. Yeah, here we have the Kafka. Kafka again partially installed. I'm going to install it. Yeah, now it is also installed. Now I'm going to restart the server. Uh, let's stop the server. Okay. Restart it. Service so uh, started, so the it's now up and running. So let's try this one. How whether this works or not? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to start the server. Mm, I think I get the configuration start correct. I'm going to start the CPU. Yeah, CPU is started. Uh, now how we can test it? We can uh, so to simulate this one. What we have to do is we have to insert a record into this. Table, so it will uh, go there. In here, we have added the log sync as well, so it will get printed, and also we can uh, see it in our Kafka topic as well. Okay, uh, so let's add a record here. So I have a so this is the table, it doesn't have any record there. So I'm going to create a new record. Uh, before that, uh, I better to start our console uh, Kafka consumer. So it will print the event. Okay, uh, okay, let's start. Let's run this one. Yeah, we got that. We got the event. You can see it is printed in our log. Say P001. So yeah. We got that in our Kafka consumer as well. So that is going through. So uh, so that is how the ETL task is had and the extension installer is working in our streaming integrator tool. So uh, the next one is let's monitor let's monitor this flow using our dashboards. So the dashboard Grafana based uh, dashboards are introduced within the streaming integrator 110 release. So in, in within this uh, release. Uh, you can see uh, within this release actually uh, you can see the statistics with this dashboard. You can see the statistics uh, for uh, CDC, file, and also database uh, operations. So, but the thing is, we can't uh, have the dashboard within the tooling. Uh, the thing is, we have to move these CD apps to a worker, and then we can see the uh, dashboard there. By pointing the dashboard to the worker, we can see. Okay, uh, so then how we can deploy? The thing is, I'm going to stop this one. Uh, since, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, the dashboards are uh, supporting CDC file and RB business. In this case, we have a in this use case we have a CDC, but we don't have a file and RB business because of that. Uh, we have created a, uh, we have selected another use case. Uh, so this is the uh, other use case is actually a simple inventory restocking application. So here you can see we, uh, there's a file. So our CT application actually read this file. Uh, let's say this is a CSC file and it has all the inventory information. So let's say new stocks comes in, all the new stock details are there within the CSC application, CSC file. 
then our application read that file by line by line and then emit those events which actually goes to the database and update the inventory table in the mysql database so uh, for that uh, this city application we have already created uh, so we uh, so we are going to push this uh, this city app also to the worker and then see how the dashboards are looks like okay uh, here you can see there are two city apps uh, we can deploy it from deploy to server but there's a problem the problem is in our worker we don't have those dependencies those extension dependency which we have already installed within our tool how we can do the thing is editor has a ui but the worker doesn't because of that in the worker environment we have introduced an extension installer cli util so using the c command line uh, interface you can uh, by emitting commands you can uh, install the extensions so let's see how we can install that one as well. Okay, so here I have a, a worker. Uh, I'm going to exit from the Kafka console. Now I'm going to uh, the tool in bin directory, in the worker bin directory. Here you can see uh, there's a file for extension install.sh or extension install.bat file. So this one is the CLI tool which we have we have uh, introduced to install the extension in the worker right. so let's see how we can uh, do uh, extension install the sh here you can see there are a few commands like list install list will actually show all the installed extensions and list all will show all the extensions including the ones which are not already installed and also we can install and we can uninstall so let's see what are the uh, extensions what are the extensions we available extension install purpose this okay these are the extensions available to be installed so we need to have a change data capture for MSSQL and also uh, Kafka so in this second use case uh, we have a mysql database database but this mysql database connector is uh, i have already installed that one so we can ignore it so now i'm going to install the cdc mssql how we can install you can install it it's simply by issuing this command so cdc mssql yeah now it is installed similar Similarly, uh, we have to install Kafka as well. Yeah, now we are ready with all the dependencies. Now the uh, CDC and SSPL dependencies are there, and also the Kafka dependencies are there. So now we need to restart the server. I'm going to restart it. Okay, you can see that yeah, this uh, starting. Yeah, now uh, we have already we have started the uh, worker. It is up and running. Uh, okay. Now we well, now what we need to do is we need to deploy those uh, CD apps. For that, uh, we can go to deploy deploy to server. And these are the CD apps that we are going to deploy, fetch order app, and the inventory restock app. So I'll show you what is this inventory restock app. Uh, restock app. First, uh, I'm going to design new. Here, what we are doing is we are listening to a file within a directory, and once the file is available, we are reading that file, and finally, we are inserting it into an inventory table. In the source, you can see um, this is the directory that we are listening on. Of course, the file is raw, and once the file is processed, we are moving that to the file process directly, and then uh, we are putting that into the into a MySQL database called inventory in the inventory table. Okay, uh, so let's deploy. Mm. Let me select the app. I'm going to deploy it to the my local server. Deploy. 
Let's uh, refresh. Okay. Oops, sorry. This one, this one. Yeah, now the uh, apps are deployed in our worker environment. So you can see there are a few more logs also added. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Uh, so I'm again going back to the Kafka. Kafka console consumer. Okay. So let's see how the dashboard chart looks like. Uh, this is my Grafana deployment. Here you can see there are several set of the dashboard. So this overall statistics is the dashboard which shows all the information, overall information. And after that, we can dig down into the, into RDBMS specific, CDC specific, and file source and sync specific ones. So I'll go to the uh, overall statistics first. Here you can see we have two CDFs, the order app and the in entry list of them. So the, uh, First, I'll go to the fetch order set. Fetch order set actually listens from a CDC. And we don't have any file of uh, DBMS. It only uh, read from a CDC. Here you can see all the CDC statistics. Here we are. Okay. And then we have the inventory restock that. So this inventory list of that is uh, actually listening from a file and then put that into RDBMS, which is a MySQL database. We are going to this inventory table as well. Let's see this here. Uh, here's the RDBMS. Here we have a file. Okay, uh, so let's add a few more events. So now, I'm, uh, now our CDF is up and running. So this is the CDC statistics. Let's see how this is actually, this chart is going on. I'm going to add uh, all these, there are about four events, but uh, only three will go through because there's a one pending. You can see in the top topic, only three events came in. And see fishing five seconds. Here you can see uh, there are about four total changes. And now I'm going to add another uh, five events, five records into the table. So it will appear here. And also, you can see now the total changes are nine. Here you can see uh, how the RTP is and also how many changes and how many tables are affected, likewise. Uh, and uh, since the CDC is uh, listening on, uh, show the status as consuming and if there is no records available to be read, then it is going back to IT. Okay, uh, so that is how the CDC dashboard looks like. So let's see how the file and the RDBMS one is also working. Uh, Do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, here I have a stock CSC file. This has about uh, 100,000 records, and I'm going to uh, insert these reports into a MySQL database in here. MySQL data in here for this one. Now it doesn't have any record. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this file into this raw directory. Then, after that, our CPF will take over that and uh, publish those uh, CSC file into the database. So first I'll show you the CSC file. Yeah, this is the CSC file. There are a few records. Okay, and now I'm going to copy this stock into the Okay, 
uh, let's see. So this is our dashboard, our database dashboard, and this is our file dashboard. Yeah, in the file dashboard, uh, you can see there are Uh, there are total events. It has uh, processed about 99,000. So this is the number of events we have that within that file. Uh, all the events received, and unfortunately, there are three to three errors here. You can see there are three errors. So within the RDBMS one, RDBMS dashboard, you can see only 999,996 records are inserted. Three records are missing because those are uh, error events. Because of that, we can uh, we don't publish them to the database. So uh, let's see how we can. So the thing is now I need to identify what are these issues, what are what are these errors, and replay these errors, replay these events, and add them to the database. So how do I can do? For that. In the stream between the one on release, one on uh, zero release, we have uh, introduced error store, error store explorer. So this is the error store explorer. So here we can connect to a worker. So I'm going to connect to a worker. And I'm using my credentials. Okay. okay. Now you can see there are three errors found. In the inventory view stock. This is the app that uh, we have used to publish that, that uh, file. I'm going to click page. You can see there are three errors. So let's see what are these, what are these errors. Now I want to rectify this. I click on the detailed uh, info. Here you can see the error is incompatible data format because the quantity is 56J. Uh, it is a double. But this is not another. So that caused that error. So how we can replay? So the thing is, uh, we can modify the event here. Uh, I remove these unnecessary parts. So this is the event. This is the correct value. This is J. I rename this. Uh, refresh it. It has 56. Then I'm going to replay. Now only two errors pending. Let's see, it is something similar. So to rectify the error, we play. There's only one error. Detailed info. Okay, uh, now I think uh, we are fine. Let's go to the uh, Let's go to the sequencer, my screen, and see how many records are there. Yeah, now we have 999,996, 99 records. All the records are there. So uh, that is how the, uh, that is how the uh, extension uh, installer, ETL task reset, and our dashboard, new Grafana based uh, monitoring dashboards, and also the error store. Uh, is working within the WSO streaming indicator 11 release 110 release. So, uh, so if, if you have any questions on this, so we are uh, we are ready to take your questions. Uh, yeah, uh, so this. Uh uh this webinar will be uploaded into the uh, wso 2 uh, webinar page in a short so you can uh, watch this again if you want from there and uh, there's a question regarding does it support the sftp uh, yes this is supporting the ftp uh, SF, uh, the file extension is supporting the sftp so you can uh, read the files from sftp or the ftp location 
So at the uh, there's a question regarding how to process multiple sheets in Excel uh, into multiple tables like one sheet to one table. So currently we can't read directly from Excel sheets, but uh, if you export that sheet as a uh, CSV or a yeah, if you export that uh, uh, sheet as a CSV file. So definitely we can read that a CSV file and insert into a, any table that you want. Yeah, uh, currently what we are supporting is actually uh, there are several data types that we are supporting, uh, like uh, CSV, XML, uh, JSON, and uh, some other uh, types like uh, uh, text and binary, but uh, not the Excel, uh, Excel files as it is. So if we can uh, export those data in one of those formats, then definitely we can uh, read it and then uh, publish the table. And also, uh, it says how to process multiple sheets in Excel to multiple table like one sheet to one table. Yeah, so basically a sheet is a single CSV file or something like that. So it is mapped to a single file. So there's a question called, does it support W2 API Manager 2.6 version? Uh, so, uh, I think it is, uh, it is regarding the analytics part of the API Manager 2.6.0. Uh, so, if it is uh, the API Analytics 2.6.0, so we can deploy all the city logics which is there in the API Analytics 2.6.0 in Streaming Integrator, and uh, you can run on top of the Streaming Integrator without any issue. Uh, any timeline for Excel support? Uh, at the moment, but, uh, we haven't considered on the Excel, but. Uh, mm. Uh, in that case, I think uh, you can uh, raise an issue uh, in our uh, GitHub and uh, with issues, and then uh, we can consider adding that uh, Excel support as well. But at the moment, uh, we don't have an exact timeline for this Excel because uh, we are more focused on uh, other data types, but, uh, not Excel at the moment. So let's wait. Uh, but definitely that uh, you can uh, raise an issue there and then we can uh, provide you uh, uh, some guideline on that. Uh, I think uh, we can provide the link for the record, uh, recorded session through a mail as well. Uh, that's a question regarding how about scaling up. So yes, we are supporting uh, active active deployment so that you can horizontally scale up this uh, streaming integrator. So you can add any number of streaming integrator nodes in active active deployment or else if you want a high availability deployment, yes, we are supporting uh, high uh, minimum match which has two nodes also. So we have a documentation for that as well so i'll share those documentations also in this chat uh, there is a connection regarding the db2 integration uh, we are supporting the db2 integration using the rdbms connector uh, so you can use rdbms connector to connect into the db2 So, uh, yes, yeah, so another question for around uh, in case of multi node, how about deployment? So, I think uh, we have already uh, mentioned that on the scaling up thing. So, so uh, we are hoping that uh, you are considering about the uh, active deployment. Okay, yeah, if I have more questions, then uh, 
can post it now or uh, post it now so we can uh, get back to you with uh, with the mailers so we can yeah we can provide you the answers on the mailers so okay. just uh, okay uh, so i think we have answered yeah. uh, all of the questions so yeah we will uh, ending the webinar now so if you have any questions any requests so you can uh, communicate through the uh, jit issues or you can create a jit issues or you can uh, join the uh, our uh, community which is there in the slack uh, and also uh, this uh, webinar will be uploaded into the uh, ei uh, sorry stream uh, wso2 uh, webinar uh, page so you can uh, watch this webinar again there and please feel free to contact us if you have any uh, queries any uh, concerns and questions regarding the streaming integrator thank you